Well, hello again. We're going to crank this video up by making a statement. The statement is, this box is driving me nuts. It's not worth the time and effort that we're spending on it. It's slowing down the project. Worst of all, it is bogging down the project. You know, right in the beginning, when I first uh, started deciding to do something about these capacitors in here, that were in here, I said I was going to eliminate the box and just put the capacitors where they're supposed to go. You know, attach them to the various tube uh, pins or uh, tube socket pins or wherever else they had to go. You know, down here on our, what took the place of our candle resistor. But then folks began to say, well, you know, you want to keep the box, you know, it is, you know, and it, it was part of the radio and all this other jazz. I've since lined it with uh, cardboard, by the way. And I cut those uh, holes in the sides. I'll put the grommets in later. That'll hold all the cardboard in. Well, you know, the whole idea in my mind was to just make some room down in here and just eliminate this. But, but then I said, well, it's been part of the thing for 85 million years. Go ahead and keep it. And I came up with the bright, you know, the bright idea, why not just go ahead and put some terminal strips in here and we'll go ahead and uh, cover the whole thing up with the box and everything's going to be hunky-dory, everybody's going to be happy. Well, forget all that. Forget that. We're not going with any terminal strips. It was a dumb idea to begin with. Sometimes you're going to run into this sort of thing when you do your radios. You know, a lot of times you'll see a restoration project on a radio or something else, you know, and they'll say, yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and then they'll say, well, we changed this, we decided to go this way, and that was the end of it, you know. They don't really show you all the trials and tribulations and skull braining that went behind it. Well, I'm going to show you the skull braining that went behind it. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the coil, the coil, that's what we're going to do right here. We're going to put the coil underneath this box. And all the capacitors, just like I wanted to do to begin with, are going to be attached to the various points that they're supposed to go to under the chassis. You know, we tried, I was going to do all kinds of crap and everything, you know, but then, you know, I was, after, I mean, I got a lot of good suggestions from a lot of you folks out there, and I appreciate you coming up with your stuff and giving, well, let's try this, let's mount the terminal strip inside the box, let's mount the terminal strips on the chassis, let's solder them, let's, let, let's not use the screws and nuts and bolts, let's, you know, I appreciate all that. However, I have to say, I finally got jolted back to reality by this, uh, our good subscriber, Sporadic Z. Now here's what uh, Sporadic Z wrote. I guess it's supposed to be Sporadic Impedance. <laughs> It says, for the best performance, the capacitor should be mounted directly on the tube sockets. Well, we knew all that, you know. And then with the leads as short as possible, we knew all that too. Although, if you hook up wires to the leads, you know, you wind up with extremely long leads. But we, we knew both of those things. And then he said, the box would be best to shield the inductor or the coil and store the schematic and a short poem. Well, you know, he's 100% right on that. He brought me back to the original idea that I had, the only difference being is that we're going to go ahead and keep the box, we're just going to take the capacitors out of it and mount them where they go on the various points. So, but we're not going to put a poem in there. <laughs> I'm not a poem guy, unless it's roses are red, violets are blue kind of thing, okay? Uh, but that's a good idea to maybe put a, uh, maybe a little time capsule letter in there, except for a poem. So, uh, Sporadic Z, who whatever your name is, some of you guys don't even want to tell me your names. I, I'm, I'm beginning to get perturbed about that, guys. Uh, I appreciate that, and that's the way we're going to go. Let's start, I'll tell you, let's start up in the right-hand corner. What the heck? Let's get the tone control in. Let's take a look at this tone control. Now, this looks a little complicated up here. What you got here, this is your audio output transformer, okay? You have one lead on the audio output transformer. On the, on the audio output transfer on the primary, it goes over and hooks to pin two. That's the output. And then you got two more leads. Actually, got one going to ground right here. Then you got this one and this one that go to another part of the chassis. Uh, this would be the uh, speaker. And uh, the two capacitors we're concerned with, one of them hooks to the uh, tone control. A connector on the tone control. The other side of it hooks to pin 40 uh, on the 47 tube, hooks to pin 2. 
Okay, that hooks the pin too. Now the other capacitor also comes up and hooks the pin too. What you've got is two capacitors now that are going to come off of pin two here. This side of this one is going to come up and hook to the tone control. This one here is going to come on down around and go back to the 47 and hook to pin 5. So this, this is an easy deal. Now let's go ahead. A little thunder, just don't, lightning and thunder, just don't want to give up. We just got done with a, just a terrible rain. Now according to this, our tone control, all we really got here is a uh, tone control. Let me get some focus here. We have a tone control. Look, This is looking down from the top of the chassis. We have a tone control and a volume control. That's it. This thing here is your tuner. So let's go ahead, bring the chassis down, and position this in the same position as the chassis. And that tells us that the tone control is on the right, right there. That's our tone control. This would be our volume control, okay? The tuner, of course, is sitting on top of the chassis up here. Tone control, volume control. Let's get the tone control in. I'm ready to put some parts back together here. We're going to take the tape off of that thing. We're going to run that tone control up through that hole and fasten it up. And here it is right here. Alright, the tone control is in and I've got it pretty well centered. It was really jammed up when I first got it, but I got it nice and loose so she works real good. The volume control works very nice now too, okay? All right, now let me let me turn this light off first. Let's take a look at our schematic and see what's really going on here. Okay, I'm going to need a 0.10 microfarad, and I'm going to need a 0.01 microfarad. Now well, that's these two right here. This is your 0.01 and your 0.10. I got a pretty good deal on these uh, 0.10 capacitors here a while back. I picked up a whole bunch of them. I'm glad I did now. Now they're not, you're not, they're your film caps. They're the, uh, I forget what they call them, ceramic types, I think is what they are. I forget what the name of these things are. I don't try to memorize all this crap. <clears throat> anyway, the best part about uh, putting these two capacitors, uh, connecting the two capacitors together and fastening them here and fastening them around to here, is there is a long, a wire that went from this side of the uh, pot all the way down to that box and then another long wire that came out of the box that went over and connected with here and, and connected to there and connected to there and another long wire that came out here and wound up over it was just a, a whole bunch of long wires I've eliminated one of them already that's this one right here one less wire to worry about so let's go ahead and connect up our first capacitor, one end from the pot to pin two of the 47. This will be the 0.10. That's the big jobby here. Matter of fact, maybe what I'll do is connect these two ends together and then run one end over here. That would be cool. And then I can just go ahead and run one end around to there. Oh, that, that would be even better. Let's do that. Well, we're going to wind up having to reinstall one uh, length of wire. But right now, let's go ahead and connect the 0 0.01 between pin 2 and pin 5 of the 47 tube, which is, I've already taken off the old stuff that was on there. There's, there's pin 2, 3, 4, and 5, and you'll see that I've got all the solder extracted from both of those. And we will put our capacitor across there like that. Okay, let's get that thing mounted. All right, folks, we have installed the capacitor from pin two around to pin five, like I said, on the 47 tube, and this is pin two right here. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Now I did not solder the pin, I mean the capacitor to pin five is still loose, as you can see because this wire right here came out of that same pin and I'm going to change that wire out. That's a, that's a mangy wire. So we'll leave this unsoldered temporarily, but we do have this in. And then from the pin two side, the pin two side of the capacitor, 
we have a wire running up to another capacitor which is connected to the tone control. From the pin 2 side, 1, 2 of the capacitor, we have a wire running up to, to another capacitor which is connected to our tone control right here. Okay. Now the other side of our tone control, you'll remember, went up and around and is connected to pin 4, but actually it's connected over here to pin 3 because it's the same electrical point. Remember that? Yeah. All right, now I try to keep the wire as close to the chassis as I can. Now the next capacitors we're going to work on uh, is this one and this one here. Uh, this this 24 tube, man, is really busy. I mean, look at that thing. There's just so much stuff connected to that thing. It can, it can really get confusing. But actually, it's not because we're just going to connect this capacitor from pin 4, which is the cathode, and across over to the wire that runs down to the end of our candome resistor setup, okay, to the extreme right. So let's see if we can find that. Uh, pin 4 on the 24 tube. This is your 24 tube. No, your, uh, yeah, your 24 tube right here. I think that's the one I'm looking for. Let me make sure. Got to make sure it's the second detector. Yes, that's it right there. So we want pin. You always have to double check, triple check. At this stage of the game, you don't want to make any screw ups, you know. I mean, you put plenty of work in. So we want pin 4, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and we want to run it down to here, which is connected on the end of the candle resistor setup. But essentially what we're doing is we're putting a capacitor around this resistor, okay? Let me show you what I'm talking about. We're putting a capacitor, here's the resistor right here. We're putting a capacitor in parallel with it. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to get that done. I can connect to pin 4 with no problem, but connecting to the other side of the resistor right here, yeah, I didn't leave myself very much lead in order to solder to right there. See, I didn't, let me get a close up here. So that's not very much lead there for me to solder to. I don't know what I'm, I may have to, uh, come on, focus in camera. What I may have to do is cut back this black a little bit, give myself something to solder to, because we're going to go from pin 4 around it to, to this end right here, which ultimately winds up down here, just like it ultimately winds up down here. Same, same. All right, let's wrap this video up uh, with the next two capacitors that got installed. Remember, now I just got done saying we had to put one in parallel with this resistor. So that's pin 4, which is a fairly large capacitor, 0.50, from pin 4 to the line that goes all the way down to the end of the candle resistor. Now that is pin 4 right there. Let me zoom in, show you what's going on here. You'll notice we got a smaller capacitor and a larger capacitor. That's pin 4. So that's pin 1, 2, 3, 4. Now from pin 4, we go through the larger cap and connect it down here. I've got it soldered in now. That's soldered in. Yeah, we're going to have to hook a couple of other wires up also to that right there. But, uh, you know, it's I've got plenty of room. If I can get some focus on this stupid thing, I don't know. Okay, there we go. We can solder to this end, or I can run a jumper to here, or a jumper to here, and solder it to these. That's what I like about this little uh, terminal strip. This is pretty neat. You know, you can just jumper one to the other, and you've got the same electrical point after you solder it up, the wires to it. All right, the next one is pin 3. Where's pin 3 at? Right here. Pin 3 comes down, goes through a resistor, and goes down to between these two uh, R11 and R12 we have that right there that's pin 3 pin 1 pin 2 pin 3 we have the resistor going down between the two resistors which I already have okay but I still needed a 0.25 microfarad from pin 3 to come over and connect to that same line that goes down to the end okay and that's what we now have. 
we now have off that same pin that that resistor was in come on camera come on all right low light level tonight guys anyway the smaller capacitor this is the 0 0.2 0 0.25 microfarad comes off of here comes down and again solders to the end of the terminal strip right there where everything else is soldered so now these these two capacitors even though they're side by side they are not in parallel uh, because this one comes from pin 3 and this one comes from pin 4 okay okay so what's what's left to do here tonight oh man I'll tell you what we're gonna put a little orange on this thing we just installed this baby we just installed that baby and we have installed this one up here and we have installed from pin 2 we've come across to the other side of that capacitor we bring it down I do not have it remember I did not solder it to pin 5 because I want to put that black wire on there so what we're going to do is just come down to about right here and kind of go across Ah, oh, heck, we'll just go across to right here. We'll leave a little gap right there. And that'll tell me that that is not soldered up, okay? All right, I think that's about it. Oh, one more thing I want to do. One more. All these wires, I pulled all these, uh, let me back up here a little bit. I pulled all these wires out of the chassis. They were all in our way over here. We were trying to solder. So what I'm going to do, there's no need to have them that long anymore. We're just going to go ahead and cut these babies down shorter. And be careful, I don't want to cut my ground wire there. That's very important, that baby. We're going to go ahead and get rid of some of these and cut them a little shorter so we don't have to tolerate them all the time. They're always in our way. All right. There we go. Now we've really cleaned that out in there now, okay? All right, next time, yes, next time, if I'm still alive, we will try to come down here and put in a few capacity. I know one thing, we're going to put this one in next time for sure, okay? Then we're going to come down and see how many of these we can get in. We only have one, two, three, four. And then this one here is a, uh, it's a four microfarad, 150 volt electrolytics. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's electrolytic right there, but that was not inside the can. I remember that one was attached down here somewhere directly from the, from the uh, uh, one point on the chassis right directly to the can dome. So... Next time we'll try to do one, two, three, four, okay? And five, for sure. Anyway, I don't know, I hope I didn't confuse anybody, you know, with what I'm doing here. We just put in a little more orange is all we did, and uh, we'll eventually get the uh, audio output transformer hooked up there too, which is not gonna be a big deal, you'll see. Piece of cake. That goes on, that goes on top of the chassis, I believe. Until next time. This is John.